Welcome to the Megacast. I'm Tyler Keith, welcoming you to our live, local, five days a week TV, radio, and streaming show looking into all things Michigan. Today, we'll talk to a whole host of fun and interesting people about uh, important stuff and interesting news stories all throughout the state of Michigan. Let's get into today's headlines on our website, civiccentertv.com. On our local news page, our top story comes from Carol Thompson at the Detroit News. Over 215,000 people remain without power as we have surpassed the 60-hour mark since Monday night's severe thunderstorm that featured wind gusts that were just barely below Category 1 hurricane speeds, topping off at about 70 miles per hour. Earlier this week, DTE said the storm knocked over more than 3,000 power lines, creating a significant public safety threat that needed to be neutralized before power restoration efforts could begin in full force. Consumers Energy said just under 35,000 customers remained without power as of early Wednesday afternoon. That's compared to 180,000 plus people uh, who are in the same situation under the guise of DTE Energy. Among Michigan electrical utilities, DTE ranked second worst in the state due to lengthy restoration times, which is not so reassuring if you are a consumer's energy customer or fan, as they ranked the worst in the state, according to a 2019 industry data report from the Citizens Utility Board of Michigan. Also making headlines today on civiccentertv.com's local news page from Robin Erb at Bridge, Michigan, with contributions in this article also from Mike Wilkinson. The FDA has authorized two specially redesigned COVID-19 booster shots earlier this week in anticipation for the fall season. The boosters are still yet to receive approval from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, whose advisors will hold meetings both today and on Friday to discuss the matter. The updated boosters are produced by Pfizer and BioNTech as well as Moderna, and they are specifically made with the goal of targeting the BA5 subvariant of the Omicron variant of COVID-19, which is currently the dominant strain in the United States. Finally, making headlines today on civiccentertv.com on our local news page from Adrian Roberts at the Detroit Free Press. The city of Detroit will open license applications for a limited time today for recreational marijuana licenses, as announced on Wednesday by Mayor Mike Duggan. The licenses would be available for such facilities as dispensaries, consumption lounges, and more, and the application window will close on the 1st of October of this year. All those headlines are on our website, civiccentertv.com, on our local news page, as well as those helpful links to accurate and up-to-date information on COVID-19 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at the federal level the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services at the statewide level, and of course, the Oakland County Health Division locally here in Pontiac, Michigan. We have a great program ahead on this Thursday edition of the Megacast. Up next, we'll talk mental health with Carrie Craywick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic. That's up next. This is the Megacast. Let's relish these moments made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Let's whoop it up for these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Fire Prevention Week is just around the corner. Join volunteer, part-time, and on-call firefighters at this year's Fire Open House. Catch up on your fire safety knowledge with live demonstrations and hands-on activities. Chat with local businesses and resources about fire prevention, see some familiar faces, fight future fires, and make some new friends. The West Bloomfield Fire Open House, October 2nd from noon to 3 p.m. 
at Fire Station 1 on Orchard Lake Road. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Connect with local leaders, philanthropists, and more. The Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce presents the 2022 Leadership Breakfast. Join the chamber for a morning of insight with guest speaker Laura Graneman, with the whole event emceed by Fox 2 News anchor Roop Raj. Join your local businesses at the Wabi Country Club September 13th at 8.30 a.m. Order your tickets by September 6th at westbloomfieldchamber.com forward slash breakfast. We'll see you there. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live daily one-hour TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Learn more about the program by visiting civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find information on our entire network of stations, including My Michigan TV. This week has brought a lot of stress upon people for many reasons as they work to navigate life without electricity and how they may recover when the lights do turn back on eventually. How do we best navigate this kind of stress? Therapist Carrie Craywick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic joins us now on the Megacast to discuss. Carrie, thanks for being with us today. Of course, thank you for having me. So in these situations, uh, things happen in, in our lives so often, whether it's the power going out and staying out for an extended period of time or uh, some some sudden incident that happens at work or in your, your personal life and your social life that can really throw you off. And, it, and, and how you react to that or how you respond to that can have significant implications on your mental health, both in that moment and in the moments that follow up with that. So what's your best advice to start off for people to navigate the stress that comes from situations where something happens that's out of their control and they have to deal with it? Sure. First and foremost, I think one of the most important things is to not stress about stress. The people that handle stress the best are the ones that welcome it or that understand at least what it is and that it has a purpose in our lives, right? So if something unexpected comes up, if a tiger jumps out at you and you have to run, you want to feel stressed. That stress is like the pulling the pulling the chain to start the motor of your lawnmower. So stress is what kicks us into gear to get going. Once you're going, it's fine, right? And so part of it is understanding what stress is. So stress shouldn't be for long, long, long periods of time. Stress does need to come with periods of rest, but that initial stress is actually something that's good for us. And, and so at what point then does that good stress become bad stress and how does that affect us? Sure, so when stress turns into panic, when, um, so if stress can help us prepare and plan and um, problem solve, that would be good. If stress turns to panic and all of our preparation, planning, and problem solving goes out the window, then that would be a bad thing. We're joined by Carrie Craywick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic with us on today's edition of the Megacast. And so in situations like we've seen this week with so many people, hundreds of thousands of people, and that's just the metrics from bill payers, not necessarily those that are also related to them or living with them or whatever mm -hmm. the situation may be, but being out of power, that can also cause a lot of stress for, for so many people. It, it interrupts their work life, interrupts, of course, their home life. It can interrupt their social life as well. Sure. And that can bleed over to other people that are in their life as well. So as you're navigating this stress yourself, what strategies should people employ to ensure that whatever their response is to the stress, if, if it's positive or if it's negative, that it isn't necessarily affecting or impeding the response of somebody else? 
Sure. I think, you know, an analogy that really seems to fit is that like, um, just like the trees, like we saw so many trees snap, they were really responsible for many of the down power lines we had. Just like a tree, we should be flexible, but firm. So if we are rigid, like a tree branch could be brittle, right? We're going to break or snap. That's going to cause a problem, but it's okay to bend and move, right? So you need to make adjustments. You need to be flexible. You need to be able, so you may have a very good plan about what you want to do, but it needs to have some wiggle room. It needs to be able to bend and adjust so that you can you can stay kind of upright, right? Otherwise, like we saw with these trees, you're going to snap or tip over. So in, in many of these situations too, Carrie, people have different ways of responding to the stress to turn it into good stress or to prevent it from becoming bad stress. And uh, so often, many of us want to help them through this situation, help other people in our lives through this kind of a situation while we're getting through it ourselves. Maybe we're handling it well, and we think they're not handling it as well, but maybe they are. What, what's your advice in terms of giving people that space that they need to recover and to respond from different stress stimuli themselves uh, versus intervening and trying to help somebody? Sure. So there, there are a couple different parts to that answer. So on one side, we're hardwired to turn to turn towards each other in stress or to do stress better together. So better oxygen flow, better hormones, better stress relieving hormones, lower heart rate. All of that happens when we do together when we do it together. So even like oxytocin, which is called the cuddle hormone, which is like you know the parent baby hormone. When we reach towards a supportive person or a supportive person reaches towards us during stress those hormones actually work better for both the giver and the receiver. Now, of course, when we're stressed, we may be irritable, we may be on edge, we may be louder than normal. We need, we may not be giving the signs that we'd welcome that support, nor, nor like kind of like a live wire, you know, we might seem like, eh, don't touch that, you know, but like, but when we can get something calming with the help of another person, both people actually calm. So, Again, again, having this attitude that like all stress isn't bad, that stress is actually a good thing, having some patient and understanding that it is the stress talking, it is the stress that's that's sort of electrifying that person's edginess. It is not the person's character and that that person is still someone you care about. Gentle touch, calm tone, um, something distracting, walking, doing something physical, um, just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here, you're here, we're here together. Even those kind of statements would help to reduce stress for both parties. We're joined by Carrie Krawick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic on today's edition of the MegaCast. Their website is birminghammaple.com if you'd like to get in contact with them, birminghammaple.com. The website, you can also call them 248 646 6659. 248 646 66 Five, nine, or send them an email, info at birminghammaple.com uh, for more information and uh, for other services from uh, Carrie and others, uh, other professionals at the Birmingham Maple Clinic. Carrie, we, we've heard so much recently uh, about, uh, about uh, really, we've talked so much recently about the relationships between different people living under the same roof, particularly for parents, but this really goes for anybody that's, that's either, you know, uh, that's either living with somebody or of course, it's living with their family at home. Sometimes, you know, people want to take the easy way out. They don't want to do certain things or take care of certain tasks. And so one of the tactics that people sometimes employ subconsciously or intently is weaponized incompetence. Can you tell us about this buzzword, what it means and, and define it for us? So weaponized incompetence is a buzzword or sort of a new word for probably an age old experience. So what it is, is like you said, what, whether someone either deliberately tries to back out of a task or subconsciously tries to back out of the task, but then is reinforced for doing so by the other person picking up the slack. So, you know, the children have been doing this, right, since the dawn of time. I don't know how to do it, right? With hope, I don't know how to tie my shoes with hopes that the parent swoops right in and ties it, right, to take the easy road out. Well, so what's happened there is that the parent learns that the kid isn't gonna do it and the kids learns all I have to say is I don't know how and they get their way. So what's happening though is we're seeing is adults 
are doing this behavior with each other too. And it's becoming especially meaningful now that households have, you know, maybe two, two equal earners or nearby earners in their home with two equally demanding schedules outside of the home, um, but that are not necessarily sharing the responsibility inside the home. And that's still divided maybe along kind of like historical gender lines. And so you're saying, hey, like, we're both working a lot. We both have the same demands on us. We both have the same, you know, income potential, but one of us is doing the dishes, the laundry, the this and that and the other thing and say, hey, I need your help. I need you to do the dishes and you get, I don't know how, or I can't do it as good as you, or I'm going to mess it up. And the message is kind of, I'm not going to do it. And then one person is left to carry the load. So there, there are there's a variety of reasons why someone may, may, may weaponize incompetence subconsciously or intently. Uh, in the, let, let's begin with somebody subconsciously weaponizing incompetence because they're tired or they simply don't want to do a task or they want to put it off, but maybe their partner or the person that they're living with is right. really intent on them taking care of that task at that moment. What should they be doing to communicate that they're not quite in the space to be able to uh, go about taking taking on that task at this time or that they'd like to, you know, they will take care of it, but they're going to put it off for a little while. Sure. I think, I think certainly, right. Certainly communicating that, like you t use the word intent, right? Like if their intent is to do it at some later time, now is just not a good time. Then following through also with that would help communicate or build trust, right? That it wasn't just a, I'll get to it later and hope later, the problem solves itself, right? But if I'll get to it later and I, in fact, get to it later, then your partner can trust you, feel secure, you know, believe what you say, right? Is that I think there are lots of consequences to using incompetence as a default, right? And, and, and this is exactly what I said. If your partner doesn't trust you, doesn't see you as responsible, um, doesn't see you as someone um, safe or believable, this is going to interfere with your relationships in lots of other ways. And and one really important one is, is the sexual relationship of the couple, right? That often one partner needs to feel secure, taken care of, understood, valued and if the other person is deliberately resisting chores or not recognizing them for what they are opportunities to take care of their partner um then there's going to be a gap there you know there's going to be this like well maybe this isn't a person that's you know out for my best interest or out to lighten my load and then how would i then reciprocate that with physical affection or you know other forms of connection so on the other side of that, Carrie, uh, if somebody is uh, in a situation where they expect a task to be done by somebody else or they've had that agreement even in their household that, hey, I'm going to take care of the dishes and I'm going to take care of, you know, cleaning the surfaces in this area of, of the home and you're going to clean this other area and you're going to do these other tasks and those tasks aren't being done. How do they address that person that they have that frustration with in a way that is sensitive to the situation, isn't necessarily accusatory of weaponized incompetence, or at the very least can bring up that, hey, I think you maybe are weaponizing incompetence to get out of this without it becoming you know, just throwing jabs and maybe picking fights. Sure, absolutely. So two, uh, two of the, um, you know, biggest destroyers of relationships are um, criticism and defensiveness. And they do go hand in hand. When one person feels criticized, the other, the, when one person is criticizing, the other person will naturally defend themselves. But in research really shows that they're two of the sort of the four things that really lead to the death knell of a relationship. So what you're asking is really important. The first is making, um, making your statement in the form of a complaint. So instead of saying, you are so lazy, you never do what I say, which is a character attack on a person's whole being. And of course they will say, of course I'm not lazy. I go to work every day. I do the law. Da, da, da. So then you're in an argument, right? So it doesn't even help you. You've got criticism and defensiveness right there. The replacement would be a complaint. You know, I don't like it when you leave the dishes in the sink. I would like it if you put them in the dishwasher, right? So a complaint is not a statement of fact. It's a statement of preference. And it's not about a person's character. It is about their behavior. And so those would be two ways to get out of argument territory and, in, um, and into sort of inarguable truths, right? A person's perception is an inarguable truth because it's theirs. We're joined by Carrie Kravick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic on today's edition of the MegaCast. You can get in contact with Carrie as well as the other professionals at the Birmingham Maple Clinic by visiting BirminghamMaple.com or by uh, 
sending an email to info at BirminghamMaple.com as well. Uh, Gary, before we let you go, any other advice today or, on, or other issues that we haven't discussed yet uh, that our audience should be keeping in mind at this time? So I think so I think one of them too, you know, one of the things that comes up with this weaponized incompetence is a person that has been doing a role for very long um, may want it to be shared, but also holds this rigid belief that it should be done a certain way. And I think that part of delegating would be accepting, and this goes back to that like a tree, flexible but firm, right? Is that if you are going to accept someone else to do it, you might also need to accept some of the nuances of the way they do it differently within reason. If you're doing something deliberately to damage a load of laundry so you never have to do it again, that is also weaponized incompetence. But if they're doing it good enough, it's just not your way. Then, then some of that needs to be let go, like the wind. It just needs to blow through the branches because if you stick on that, then it's going to snap, right? It, the person's either going to stop doing it or you're going to stop asking them and then you're going to be back where you started. I think the other thing is, again, using this analogy of plants and trees is shine the light on what you want to grow, right? That like when it's done well, even partially, you need to focus on that. Thank you. I feel so great when I come in the house and there's no dishes in the sink. That makes me feel amazing. You know, like really, really offering your attention to what went right as opposed to what went wrong will help build your partner's esteem and make them more motivated to please you in the future. Well, Carrie, we appreciate your time. Appreciate your insight on, on these different issues. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thank you so much. I look forward to it as well. You as well. BirminghamMaple.com to get in contact with Carrie and the entire team at the Birmingham Maple Clinic. We'll take a quick break on the Megacast when we return with the market moving up and down over the past several months due to inflation and other economic issues. What should we do to manage our investments and set ourselves up financially for the future? We'll be joined by stock market coach Jason Brown from the Brown Report next on the Megacast. Mark your calendars for the 11th annual Family Fun Night at West Bloomfield High School. Stop by on Friday, September 16th at 5 p.m. for an evening of free, fun activities as we honor our military, police, and fire heroes. Plus, stick around to see Laker football take on Clarkston at 7 p.m. To find out more, scan the QR code on your screen or visit wbsd.org forward slash community forward slash family fun night. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's relish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Can I ask you a question? Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live daily one-hour TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keefe. You can learn more about the show by visiting civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find information on our entire network of stations, including My Michigan TV. With the stock market fluctuating, what seems like more than ever, it's a tough time perhaps for many to navigate how they move their money in the market and how to maintain their financial base and continue to build on their retirement. Joining us now to help us clear some of the confusion and strategize for the future is Jason Brown, options trader and stock market coach with the Brown Report. Jason, thanks for joining us. Tyler, thanks for having me. 
appreciate having you on. So it seems with what we're dealing with economically right now, particularly with regard to inflation, that the markets are kind of uh, jumping and dipping back and forth, probably at a greater pace than we're used to, even when we're at a point where we're looking at potentially a recession at some point in the near future. With that being said, there seems to be two modes of thought. Some people say now's the time to maybe you know cut your losses, dip dip out of the market a little bit, and wait for things to level off before you continue to invest. While others are saying prices are low, get in now. It's bound to rebound at some point, and you could be making significant gains in the market by entering now. As as someone that is dealing with people's uh, with with uh, coaching people through the market. Where do you stand on this issue at this time? Yeah, so thanks for the question. Again, thanks for having me on. I think people have to understand what type of investor or trader they are. And those are two separate things. So if you're a long term investor, uh, statistics and history shows that long term, the market goes up, you can take uh, the real estate crash, you can take people flying, flying planes into a building in 9-11. You pick any incident, trade war with China, we eventually came out of it and went higher. So if you are a long-term investor, um, then almost every day is a good day to buy, especially when there's a sell-off because long-term studies have shown that the overall market goes higher. However, if you're a trader though, what's beautiful about being a trader or trading options, and most people don't know this, is that you can make money from stocks falling and so the, the way that we coach and teach is we don't have to just put money away and wait for 20 years for the market to rebound. We can actually make more money from stocks falling because stocks fall faster than they rise. And so my, my, my insight would be, number one, know which game you're playing. If you're playing the long-term game, then great time to pick some stuff up at a discount. If you're playing the short-term game, you don't, or even the medium-term game, or even if you're playing a long-term game, but you're scared about how that's affecting your portfolio at the time, you don't have to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich. There are strategies that you can do to A, protect your portfolio, and B, actually make money from stocks coming down. And there have been some cases too where people, as you said, take that short-term game as, as kind of a way to put some more money in their pocket, maybe get out from behind some of their, uh, some of their bills or some of their debts. Uh, and, and put themselves at a better financial standing so that they can focus on their financial future. From from my perspective, I see that as a as a risky game to be playing. And but for some people, it is their best move. Where where do you stand on that? And how do you coach people through whether or not that's a smart decision for them to make financially to play the short game and play an aggressive game, especially in this market? Yeah, well, you used a very interesting word, which is that seems risky. And I think throughout history, we've been taught if you can make money quickly, that's risky. But it's really not risky. It's more about knowing how to do it. And so some people look at the stock market as a high stakes craps table, you know, and like, OK, I'm going to gamble today and see if I can make some money. Um, but let me give you an example. Yesterday, I literally made twenty thousand dollars in the span of about one hour. There was no gamble. There was risk because there's always risk in a market because you're never 100% sure that the trade is going to pan out. But the way that I teach people, it's like the weatherman. The stock market is like being a weatherman reader. There are signs that tell you there's an 80% chance it's going to rain. It's a 90% chance it's going to rain. When you take um, that 80%, 90% chance that the weatherman told you, you don't say, well, I'm going to wear shorts and, and bring my beach towel. You say, it's a high probability it's going to rain. I'm going to grab an umbrella. And so that's what we teach people is that we look for the 80, 90% chance that it's going to rain, or that means stocks are going to fall, or we look for the 80, 90% chance that stocks are going to rise. And that's when we take that short term shot. And so it's more about probability and statistics taking that at the most highly probable time. Now, there'll never be a hundred. Now, with the weather, it could be a 100% chance it's going to rain, but have they ever said it's 100% chance it's going to rain and it didn't rain? Same with the stock market. There will never be 100% like, this is the time, buy or sell right now. But you can enter with about an 80%, 90% confidence level when you learn certain chart setups and you learn what the market does when it's about to sell off. The same way we learn what the clouds do just before it's about to rain. As you're coaching people through the short game, uh, especially if they're in a situation where they're where maybe they don't have it as 
significant of a financial uh, base to really go at the market in that kind of a way or really be able to, to undertake so much of the risk that is associated with that, even as they calculate it and go at it strategically with someone that is in the know like yourself, Jason. How do you navigate that with uh, your customers, with your clients to teach them how to ease their way in in that sense without putting themselves in a position that could potentially be of even greater loss to them given their financial standing? Yeah, and that's a great question. Last thing we want anyone to do is to hear something like this and kind of take their life savings or the little that they have left and just say, I'm going to try this. That's not the mindset that you want to have if you're going to get into this game. So what we teach people is that you don't have to have any money to do this. Now, you might be like, OK, what is this guy talking about? Because we practice, we teach people to practice paper trading first. So once you get the knowledge, the coaching and train on how to do this, it was kind of like a pilot. We put you on a simulator and say, here's a fake account, but it's going to simulate the real market. And so I want you to practice getting in and getting out at those 70, 80, 90 percent chance levels that we talked about. And we're going to practice with fake money. We say once you're right, seven out of 10 times. So if you take 10 trades and you're right, seven out of 10, then you're ready for real money or once you're net profitable, you're ready for money, which means let's just say you take 10 shots and you're wrong seven times, but you lose $100 seven times, but on time eight, nine, and 10, you make $1,000. So you make $3,000 three times, but you lose 700 because you lose seven times. You may have lost more than you won, but you lost small, but you won big and you're net profitable. And that's the name of the game. You'll never be 100% profitable every trade that you take. It's just not the industry that we play in. And so it's about net profitable or being right more times than you're wrong. If you can follow that, you put the odds in your favor of being profitable. And the beautiful thing is you can do that for free by paper trading or practicing. You don't have to come in with real money only to find out you didn't really know what you thought you knew. That's such a great strategy to learn what you're dealing with before it puts you at any sort of risk or reward so that you're going at it with the best potential knowledge and still having that backing from a coach. We're joined by Jason Brown from the Brown Report, joining us on today's edition of the Mega Cast. He's a stock market coach as well as an options trader. You can get in contact with him by sending an email to info at thebrownreport.com or calling 248-918-2909, 248 248-918 two nine zero nine and again the brown report.com is his website so jason for let's go back on that a little bit and take a step back for those that are either in the market already or are looking to get into the market maybe are a little bit uh confused about how they should do that how uh, how helpful is it to have a stock market coach even if it's just to get them started and really learn what they're getting into so the thing about being a coach is well, let's talk about just being in the stock market in general. People have a high emotion tied to their money. And so when you have a big emotion tied to your money, like if I lose this, my wife's going to be upset at me. Or if I lose this, my husband's going to be upset. Or um, I could have paid a bill with that money. Well, number one, you shouldn't be investing with money that you need to use to pay the bills. But typically people put so much pressure on money, whether they win or make some or lose some. And so when you have a coach, a coach can come in and detach from your emotional relationship with money and help you see the charts and the strategies for what they are. And sometimes the answers are right in front of you, meaning the answer is you should buy right now or you should sell. But what we find in this industry is two emotions usually take over. Number one is fear and number two is greed. You either fear you're going to be wrong or you place a trade and you're right. And when you should take the profit and get out, you're getting greedy. Like this is the one that's going to put my kids through college. And the coach can come in and kind of remind you of your game plan, remind you why that stock may be getting ready to turn around and also coach you through. If you're going to hold on to it, here's how you could protect yourself so you don't give all your money back. Um, if you think about most people who you know lose money in the stock market, you know, if you were to interview them or ask them, like, how, you know, what happened, they would typically say, like, I just I didn't see that coming or I was so focused on how much I was going to lose. I froze or I got scared. And having that outside counsel and coaching um, can really help. And then more importantly, most people don't know the other strategies that are available to them. All they know is buy low, sell high. 
But if that's the only strategy you have, then you only make money when the market goes up. And we all know that the market can go sideways as well as down. And so that's 67% of the other ways that the market can move. Most people don't know how to capitalize on it. We're joined by Jason Brown from the Brown Report, joining us on today's edition of the MegaCast. The BrownReport.com uh, is his website for more information to get in contact with him uh, and uh, to go through some of his tutorials as well as other information that will be helpful to you as you navigate the market. And as we talk about that, so many people, uh, as we go into the fall and maybe going into a new job, maybe it's the first time that their that their employer is providing a matching 401k, or it's the first time that they're just investing in the market at all. Maybe they're fresh out of college and they're trying to start building right away for their financial future. Uh, what are some of those common mistakes that you see from people that I, either you coach or just from observation and what you've learned over the years among those that are just entering the market and what's your advice for them to avoid some of those common mistakes? Well, some of the common mistakes that I see, and I wanna separate the two, there is investing with like a 401k and then there's trading or taking uh, managing your own money. So if you're just getting a, a new job or you've been on a job for a while, one of the most common mistakes I see is that people live so uh, above their means that when a company comes along and offers a 401k, either A, they don't have the ability to deposit 10% or whatever the match is of their check because they like need every penny of their money. And so that's a big mistake that I see um, or they say, I'm going to enroll later and later ends up being five years, 10 years. And they're like, I never did it. I forgot. And you'll go back and look and say, had you been contributing mixed with the match that the company would have gave you, which is technically like free money, you would have had, you know, hundred percent, 200 percent return by now. And there's no way to get that time back. So I would say sign up for it for day one, even if you believe that you need 100% of your paycheck, you'll be surprised at how you can finagle and deal with the money you have when it's already taken out before you get it, right? Like we all think like, I need every penny. But if they take 100 out of every paycheck and put it in the market, you'll somehow figure out how to live without that $100. So just um, you know, trust me and try it and sign up and start depositing something. I think the second mistake that most people make is they think that the little amount of money that they have won't amount to anything. And they don't understand the power of compounding interest. They don't understand the power of the stock market. They don't understand the power of time. And sometimes people say, well, all I can contribute is 50 bucks. That's not going to turn into anything. But that 50 will start to snow. If you put 50 away every single month at the end of the year, you'd have about 600 bucks. Doesn't seem like a much until you look at the average return of the stock market is annually about 11 to 13% a year. So now at the end of one year, that 600 bucks is now starting to make $60 a year. Plus you're still putting in $50, right? So next year you have 1200, but now if you're averaging 13%, you're making an extra hundred plus dollars um, a year. Um, not to mention if we have a market that's better return than 13%. So you, people don't, people don't give enough, um, enough, I don't know, points or credence to what could happen once you get started small and how that can snowball into a big amount. Now on the other side of taking control of their own investments, I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they see someone like me or they watch, you know, CNBC and see the, the, the talking heads on there. And the mistake that they make is assuming that people are smart or assuming that they are dumb or that the people they're looking at are special and they're not. And it's not that anyone's dumb or smart or special or not. It's more about what information and experience do they have that I don't. And if you can get the same knowledge and information, you can trade or invest the same way that they do because there's only one stock market. Warren Buffett can buy Apple, I can buy Apple. It's not like he has a special set of Apple shares that's only reserved for him. It's not like Elon Musk has a special set of, set of Tesla shares. I can buy Tesla as well. And so once you realize there's no special stock market, but there is specialized knowledge. And once you get that same knowledge, you can get a similar result. I don't wanna say the same result because it depends on when they started investing, depends on their experience, but you can get some version of a result if you get that same knowledge. So don't make the mistake of thinking people are special or you're you're not as good as them. You can get that knowledge, some of that knowledge and a lot of help from Jason and his uh, team at The Brown Report by visiting thebrownreport.com. Jason, thank you very much for joining us today. 
I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thebrownreport.com is the website again. And for those of you that would like to get in contact with them uh, beyond that, info at thebrownreport.com, 248-918-2909. Let's take a short break. On the other side, we'll head to the theater with movie critic Nate Adams. This is the MechaCast. Let's whoop it up for these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the cheering going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Fire Prevention Week is just around the corner. Join volunteer, part-time, and on-call firefighters at this year's Fire Open House. Catch up on your fire safety knowledge with live demonstrations and hands-on activities. Chat with local businesses and resources about fire prevention, see some familiar faces, fight future fires, and make some new friends. The West Bloomfield Fire Open House, October 2nd from noon to 3 p.m. at Fire Station 1 on Orchard Lake Road. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov flu. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live daily one-hour TV, radio, and streaming show about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Learn more about the program, civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you'll find information on our entire network of stations, including our co-flagship streaming online on MyMichiganTV, MyMyTV.com, as well as on their free app for your smartphone and your smart TV. Just go to your app store and search My Michigan TV for free content from Michiganders by Michiganders all across the Great Lakes State. Joining us now on the Megacast, cast as you head to the theater this Labor Day weekend. What should you be watching? And if you've missed some of the latest uh, flicks at the movie theater, what can you catch up on? Nate Adams from TheOnlyCritic.com joins us now on the MegaCast. Nate, thanks for being with us again. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you on. So it's been a, an exciting summer at the box office. It really seems like movies are back after a couple of years of a lot of uncertainty, a lot of delays in some of these big hit movies that came out over the last several months. So let's go back and recap kind of what were, were some of the uh, surprises of the summer movie season and others that maybe weren't so surprising but were uh, absolute hits. Yeah, so it, it is right. This was a rebound year for movies at the summer movie box. We had the first time we had a summer movie going season in probably two or three years since since the pandemic, since 2019. And I mean, last summer was kind of the rebuild, but this summer was really the blueprint for where it, things are going and headed. Uh, obviously, the biggest success of the summer was no question Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise's return to the character he originated uh, 34 years ago. And that was a crucial film that brought all demographics back it is it is touching on the cusp of 700 million dollars domestically which only five films have ever done in their lifetime and you don't get to those kind of numbers without everybody going to the movie theater so there was a lot of thought for the for a long time you know spider-man venom all uh fast furious quite horror movies all those films were bringing back a younger demographic and nobody was questioning that the 18 to 34 demo wasn't going back to theaters, but they were questioning whether older moviegoers were going back because, you know, they were wary of either a streaming COVID, all that stuff. But then Elvis also made an, another 150 plus million domestic, which is insane for an original movie, not based on an existing IP. Although you could argue that Elvis himself is the IP and especially with the, the glutton, of streaming services and things that are competing, it was refreshing to see that, yes, movie going rebounded. Uh, Minions, The Rise of Gru brought families back in huge ways, made almost $400 million domestically. Lightyear, on the other hand, which was Pixar's film, did not fare as much, and that also sprung calls that, oh, well, maybe families aren't going back. But um, overall, really healthy marketplace. And it's funny, Tyler, you were saying that, you know, movie going is back. However, heading into this weekend and the next few weeks, movie going is going to be in, in 
dire straits. It's not looking too good for at least until the middle of October. Uh, there are some sleeper hits coming out in September. The Woman King starring Viola Davis. There's Don't Worry Darling with Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. But really, the next surefire, like, gonna light the box office on, um, gonna light the box office ablaze is gonna be Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam DC superhero film at the end of October. Halloween Kills, or Halloween Ends, I should say, I get them all mixed up, there's so many. Uh, comes out uh, October 14th, that could make some money at the box office, and it should. However, Peacock last week announced that they're gonna debut a day and date on its streaming service, so it's anyone's guess. <laughs> Drawn by Nate Adams from TheOnlyCritic.com. You'll also find his reviews of many movies on Rotten Tomatoes. You can also see him uh, locally in the Detroit area uh, here and there on Fox 2 News is Critically Speaking with Lee Thomas. More information, you can read uh, his reviews at TheOnlyCritic.com. So in, in that case, if people are looking to go to the movies this Labor Day weekend, knowing that you know, maybe it's a little bit slimmer pickings this time of year than it's been over... Uh, the the height of the summer movie season. What should they be looking to watch at the movie theater this Labor Day weekend? Well, it this Saturday, a bunch of theater chains, actually most theater chains in the area, are participating in National Cinema Day. So it's $3 tickets all day, any format, doesn't matter what time you go. So IMAX, D-Box, XD, all those extra formats are $3 all day, no questions asked. And the theaters are also doing $3 concessions. So $3 snacks, $3 uh, popcorn drinks, all that stuff. So Saturday is going to be the really day to kind of, if there is something that you haven't seen and you've been meaning to get out and go see it, I still know, believe it or not, I know a few people that haven't seen Top Gun Maverick. Have you seen Top Gun Maverick yet? I have not seen Top Okay, Gun well, yet. Saturday is the day that you need to go see. $3 all day. Uh, they're also bringing back Spider-Man No Way Home in the theaters. It's called the More Fun Stuff version. So it's a re-release that I guess has eight more minutes of footage. I really think it was just Sony seeing that there was nothing on the release schedule and they just wanted to take advantage of it. And it's kind of ironic because the box office this weekend is probably going to look pretty bleak. And there is a potential that Top Gun Maverick in its 16th week in theaters might be number one again battling it out with spider-man no way home which of course made a gazillion dollars back in december of 2021 when the omicron variant was surging and and that was a godsend to theaters at the time so it's kind of funny that it all comes back around full circle to the these two juggernauts competing with each other there's also smaller affair there's a there's a film produced by jordan peele called honk for jesus save your soul it's got sterling k brown and regina hall i saw it at sundance back in january it's a great it's, it's it's a fun little comedy it's all also premiering day and date on Peacock. There's uh, Jaws is being re-released in IMAX, you know, the Steven Spielberg seminal classic. I personally have never seen it on the big screen, and I think that is what I'm going to take advantage of for the $3 National Cinema Day as I support my local my local theater. We're joined by Nate Adams from TheOnlyCritic.com. You can also find his reviews of many different movies uh, now and in the future on Rotten Tomatoes and find him also on Fox 2 with, with Lee Thomas on Critically Speaking on occasion as they talk about the movies uh, on Fox 2 over the weekends. Uh, more information, again, theonlycritic.com for all of that. And, and they, there's, there's been a, a story that's come up recently that it, I, I like to kind of venture into some of the odder news stories, some of the things that make that really make people turn their heads and raise their eyebrows. And I saw uh, a story a few months ago and actually just saw the trailer for this movie. Uh, the Winnie the Pooh IP, part of the Winnie the Pooh IP, just became I was domain. just watching this trailer this morning. I was just watching I was going to ask, have you seen the trailer for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey? And on a scale of negative one to negative a thousand, how bad do you think that horror film? Oh, I think it's going to be a ton of fun. If I'm being completely honest, it looks like a stingy, cheap B movie. And I am actually, I'm all in on it. Of course, it's not going to be any good, but that's also kind of the fun. Get together with a bunch of your friends and just watch it and see like how absurd and mindless it is uh it's interesting because the winnie the pooh went to public domain last year so that means disney no longer has the exclusive rights to the character and it almost just makes you wonder maybe more things should go in the public domain if we're just going to get this creative a slasher movie with winnie the pooh and piglet and they don't even look like animals they're wearing masks and walking around with axes and things so 
Uh, I will definitely see it, and I will come on here first and talk about it with you when it when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not much of a horror film kind of a guy. I don't really enjoy that format. It's not even like the scary. I, I would argue it's more of a comedy, but that's just me. No. <laughs> that's what I would argue too. I'm a big comedy guy, so I'm gonna go for it. I love a good laugh, especially with movies that are just absolutely terrible, but in a way that's endearing. Uh, and it makes it. I'm hoping it's so bad. That they want to make that that becomes a little bit of a cult favorite, and when the, the remainder of the IP, you know, some of the other characters that came later on mm-hmm. in the Winnie the Pooh lore, end up being public domain, that they follow it up. That's my yeah, with yeah. That because if it's good, <laughs> if it's good, but if it's good by being terrible one time, you can strike gold on that twice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find that review at theonlycritic.com. Nate, a couple more minutes with you. Anything else we should be uh, keeping in mind going forward at the movies or, or things we should be looking out for? Yeah, so it's while it might not be a strong month on the marquee, there you know we're heading into the fall festival season when a bunch of Oscar favorites are going to start uh, rising up into the Cinemaplex. Um, streaming is definitely stepping up to fill the void. Next Thursday is Disney Plus Day, so you're going to be able to see uh, Pinocchio, which is stars Tom Hanks as Geppetto. That comes out next week. Uh, Good time for television series. Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power drops uh, tomorrow on Amazon Prime Video. I saw the first two episodes. It's incredible. It's massive. The They they spent $500 million on this thing, and it looks like you can see every penny. You also have House of the Dragon over on HBO Max. So a lot of fantasy people that are in that into that zone are definitely getting their fix. Uh, as we head into October, you know, things, like I said, we got Halloween Kills, Black Adam, uh, but I'm really looking forward to November once you know we get into Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and then of course I am just over the moon excited for the next uh, Avatar film, Avatar: The Way of Water, which comes out in December. Which James Cameron they're re-releasing the first Avatar in all major formats, IMAX, 3D, 4XD, the most complicated way that you need to see it will be back in theaters at the end of September, and I think that that has the potential to a gauge where the interest is going to be for the second installment. And also, I'm just excited to see Avatar back in that medium again because watching it at home just isn't the same because James Cameron makes his films for the biggest, largest screen possible. So I'm excited about that. You'll find all of his reviews at theonlycritic.com and and find them also on Rotten Tomatoes. Nate, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tyler. I I look forward to coming back and talking about uh, Winnie the Pooh murdering innocent bystanders. Uh, That's what this show is all about. (laughs) Thanks so much, Nate. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. Theonlycritic.com for all of his reviews. That is going to do it for this Thursday edition of the Megacast. Of course, you can find all of our episodes in each and every full uh, interview on our website, on demand, civiccentertv.com slash Megacast, where you'll also find more info on all of our partnering TV, radio, and streaming outlets that join us every day live and live to tape and learn more about their other original programming. Also on our website, go to our Lakers sports page, civiccentertv.com slash Lakers sports. We cover high school football every single Friday. Friday featuring here in our local coverage area, the West Bloomfield Lakers. They kick off their home side of the season, their home opener on Friday night against the Harper Woods Pioneers, welcoming them to the OAA. Uh, We'll begin at 7 o'clock, kickoff at 7, pregame at 6.30 civiccentertv.com slash Lakers sports to find out all the different ways you can watch and listen to that game. And of course, get a preview of this week's game and join me and head coach Tyrese Grice on this week in Laker football. Big thank you to everybody that joined us on today's edition of the mega cast, Carrie Craywick from the Birmingham Maple clinic, Jason Brown from the Brown report. And of course, Nate Adams from the only critic.com. A huge thank you as always to our crew, making this program possible every single day, Jared Clark and Calvin Brown at master control at the office of my Michigan TV as well as the king of television, as we call him, Larry Nyland, our producer for each and every edition of the show. That is going to do it for today's edition of the program. We will, we will return with a new episode of the Megacast tomorrow morning.